Traveling many miles canoeing on Lake Erie, Native Americans used to call this area home. What attracted them to this area was the vast amounts of wildlife and salt. But the salt springs were popular among many different groups that made many of them want to also settle into this area. Over time, after the Indians, the French soon took over. In the 18th century, French explorers canoed up the river and harvested salt. Canoeing was the easiest way for them to get the salt, but an alternative method was walking. The Salk Trail was well known to the natives and the French. It soon became a way of transportation throughout the early years. Even before the French, of course, the, the Indians were here, and they traveled on um, what we call the Sauk Trail. Now that trail actually started in the eastern part of the United States. Then it was called the Great Trail, coming going west, and that came around Lake Erie and uh, went through what is now Toledo and Detroit. By 1823, Congress finally got around to appropriating uh, some money to improve the roads from the Maumee Rapids as far as Detroit. And that same year, 1823, Father Gabriel Richard was appointed as a delegate of the Territory of Michigan to Congress in Washington. And he convinced Congress to appropriate some more money and hire a surveyor. And this is where uh, Orange Risden comes into the picture. Born and raised in Vermont, Orange Risden took an interest in navigation and surveying at a young age. Around the age of 30, he was well known into his career when he married Sally Newland and had a son named Henry. In 1823, Orange decided to move his family west to the territory of Michigan. While he was out, he discovered the Saline River Valley and decided it would be a good place to live. In 1829, Risden decided to start building his house overlooking the Saline River. Continuing to build homes for families to rent, or to became the new founder, Celine, in 1832. With this new and establishing village always came new people. William Davenport immigrated to Michigan with his parents from New York. He started out very well having multiple businesses around Celine, but one of his businesses became crucial after a tragic incident hit Celine. May of 1881, uh, downtown Celine looked almost identical, except it was more wood than brick. And that morning, um, a neighbor lady noticed there was a small fire behind what would be Mac's uh, restaurant right now. And she noticed it, she opened the window, and back in the day they used to holler, fire, 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 and everybody came a running. Well, uh, the fire kept growing and growing, and folks kept coming, and they, they had to gather up buckets ladders because in that time of day or in year they needed uh, buckets and they had to do the bucket brigade to put the fire out. Well in the meantime the fire because it was wood and timber it grew and grew and so if you could imagine the whole side of the street where Max restaurant is from the corner was on fire and it was starting to make the corner and going towards what I call a calico cat but it's that church on the other end of the street. So all of that's blazing it's getting hot enough that on the other side of the street where Brecken uh, Grill and the pizza place are, we're also in danger. And that's when the folks from the community all came together, women, children, and they started this bucket brigade on that side of the street. And they saved those buildings, but they lost 22 businesses um, on that. That'll be the uh, uh, southeast corner. So, at that time, they didn't really have a fire department, it was just the businessmen were the volunteers. So they'd have these uh, sheds with buckets piled in them and, and they would, that's where they'd go. So what they decided after that fire, because it was so bad, is uh, a Mr. Davenport, who was the banker across the street where Key Bank is now, his son and him went to Chicago, they bought a fire truck. They brought it back and 
So then they created what they called, I believe, the Celine Fire Protection Company. That was what they called the fire department. And Davenport was the first fire chief. And so it kind of started there. I'm not sure if it was late in 1881 or if it was 1882, but that's kind of the beginning of the Celine Fire Department. William's successfulness led his wife, Mrs. Davenport, to also contribute her ideas by starting the very first library. The beginning of the Celine Library was the year 1900. And there was a group of women. So this group was led by a, um, the wife of the local banker. Her name was Mrs. William Davenport. And she offered them the building that we all knew as the Drowsy Parrot. So in 1917, she sold that building to the Library Association and that became the city's, you know, the city's um, library building. Celine progressed throughout the 1900s, marking its very first hospitals, schools, and even theater. What this new progression also meant the fire department and library had to keep up with these new changes. Prior to 1991, let's say 1989, Celine City Council came to the current library board and said, we need to do the library in a different way. And what I mean by that is, in before 1991, Celine District Library was a city library. So it was a city department, which what that meant is that the city paid for the library. But how the library was used but was by all the people that make up the Celine School District. So city council in the early 90s said, okay, we need a different model. So there was a different model out there. There was something called a district library. And what that meant was two entities came together and said, we want to have a district library, but and we'll work up all the paperwork for it, but then what we have to do is we have to go out to the voters, and the voters have to say, yes, we want a district library, and yes, we will pay for it. So that's pretty much what happened. The city of Saline sent a group of people, and the Saline School District sent a group of people. They met around a table, came up with a district library agreement, and then the ballot was put before the voters. But then what happened is, just like what happens when a community grows, the space was getting too small. So the building on the corner of Celine, South Ann Arbor Street and Henry was available, and the city moved the library into that space. January of 1994, we opened up the district library on North Maple Road, which is right next door to the Saline Middle School. The station moved from uptown to where it is now at the corner of Harris and Michigan. Um, it was still volunteer all this time till uh, 1999. And then I was uh, hired to be the first full-time fire chief. Now into the 21st century, Celine finally was turning into the city it was meant to be. Now home to over thousands of people, the services have to keep providing too. We are in the 21st century. We do have 25,000 people in our area and it continues to grow because the economy has come back and we're gonna probably have more subdivisions. Uh, the, the townships will grow. So we hope to put on more full-time firefighters in this next year actually so that we can cover more of the population and get the response times quicker. So we are gonna keep, continue to make improvements that way. Many materials are now available in digital format. So we're, we're sort of at that crossroads right now of do we keep buying hard copy books, print books, or should we be putting all of our money into digital formats? We'll just keep, you know, keep doing what we're doing and and we listen to what people have to say to us and because we're really a community library. You know, it's, it's not my library. It's not the library of the people who work there. It's really all of our libraries. So with that in mind, we'll just keep marching toward the future and, and enjoy what we're doing along the way. <laughs>